Hello everyone. Welcome to another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. Now picture yourself as a random college kid who walks into a random house and sees two grown men watching an 80s porn film. And we try to and they try to explain to him that it's a Jim Carrey movie. Alrighty then. This is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort. I feel pain. <laughs> I feel pain. You didn't even watch the movie! What movie did I apparently not watch? Uh, we watched the second film in the Carrie Career series that we're doing called All in Good Taste. Interesting. That sounds like a good title. Probably it's, It was probably a lot better than the last movie, right? Hmm. I don't even have my fucking format. So, good, God. good thing I memorized it. Uh, numbers. Yes, please. Continue with the numbers. So, these, as you noticed, the last film since it came out in the early 80s, uh, they didn't have a lot of numbers on them because it's so old and they didn't really have, have very much details on this low budget bullshit thing. Um, so, uh, the box office was for this film. Um, first of all, this film was finished in 1981 and it did not release to theaters in Canada until 1983 and they did not report those numbers but we were able to get an estimated budget for this film <laughs> Canada <laughs> only in Canada the US would not allow this film to be put in theaters I wonder why this budget had two it was an estimated budget of two hundred thousand dollars this was a two hundred thousand dollar movie this was a two hundred thousand dollar movie and probably most of it was Jim Carrey Usually on our uh, critic versus audience rating, we, we use Rotten Tomatoes as, as a standard, even though they're not a good standard, but it's a standard we use. And once again? Um, unfortunately, that they did not have a Rotten Tomatoes page, so I went on the IMDb rating, which they only have one solid rating that's only from users, of, of 3 out of 10. That's lower than the last film. Yep. Michael, tell us about the story of this, and then I'll get into the facts. Basically, it's a, a aspiring movie writer who's trying to get his movie okayed by producers and it's supposed to be a B-rated movie. Sounds familiar. And these producers are trying to convince him to turn it in pretty much into a sex film. And one of them actually hijacks it and forces him to do a sex film. Or a documentar documentary of these sex and strip, strip workers and whatnot. Strip workers and whatnot. It's not actually sex workers or anything. It's just, just, just the people who like to show off their nudeness to the world and make money off of it. That's the kind of movie that he gets stuck making. And we only see Jim Carrey for like maybe like 10 minutes total. Yep. Yeah. And this is the second movie in one year that he made with the same plot line. I mean... I feel like there's less nudity in this one than the last one. Th yes. I feel like they... If we're going to compare the two films... This one actually took one narrative in the 15,000 narratives in that grimy and dirty SNL movie we watched and made it to one feature-length film. Yeah, it seems like a more refined um, of whatever the fuck that movie was. So, three little things that happened. This was Jim Carrey's feature debut. Because last time he wasn't featured. This time he was because he he was in, he became a star when this movie came out. This is what made him a star that people it started being coming interested in him. I don't know why. Maybe it was his his uh, the technique in the humping scene. So you know how there there was um, the locations that they went to. Yeah. So plain enough, they actually used stock footage from a a, a, a trilogy that this director pr produced in the past called the Mondo Trilogy. Have you ever heard of the legendary Mondo Trilogy? No! Well, there are three Mondo movies and they took all of the, they took all of this from the second one. The yeah. first one was called Mondo Strip. Mondo Strip. The second one, which they took the stock footage from, was from Mondo Nude. And then the third one was from Mondo Sex. He made a movie about a movie he made previously. Yeah, and that was probably his experience in making the movie. That's why it said it was based on true events. Now, to our positives and neg negatories. I didn't even write a pause. I didn't even write a pros and cons columns on this. 
I, I stopped taking notes after the first 20 minutes. As a professional as I am, I, I went ahead and made, made a, a stem and leaf plot here. You made that right after the movie was over. During, um, I, it says here, um, my positives, the, my negatives, movie. Okay, it actually had a story going on for it. Unlike, it felt lost. Unlike the sex and violence ha- family hour. Like, it had a story. It, like, it's just, I felt like... Their characters didn't even have actual names. It was the wife uh, and the producer. Like, yes. It had a story. It tried to tell a narrative. It tried to tell a direction. But it was, like, also going in three different directions at the same time. But they're all going the same way. Um, at least, uh, this song for the film was original, I guess was for the movie. He said this film was finished in 81. This film had a 70s vibe to it. Jim Carrey's in it for like about 10 minutes. He doesn't say a single word. He's literally hunched over like a gorilla or a monkey covering his nutsack the entire time. You get to see Jim Carrey ass though. You will not see it on our channel. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Anyway, I better not see what I thought you did when I look back at this footage. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and give our ratings before we discuss the next thing. So, rating for this movie for me is a one out of ten. How is the carry? That, that's what we'll get to next. What's your rating of the movie? I'm. You gave it a one. I am actually going to go up 0.5 points and give it a 0.5 out of ten because it actually has a narrative. It's very fucking held together by the worst kind of Elmer's glue you can think of. But it's there. It's for... It's these last two films... There was a beginning, a middle, and the end. These two films are for an acquired taste, I think. It also gives you a look into what society was like back then. Okay, so, Carrie. How did Carrie do? He was barely in this. It was... The only thing that was noticeable is when he was in that goddamn speedo when he was humping some chick. I, was I don't like, think that was Carrie. I think that was Carrie when he was the assistant. That was Carrie. I, I'm going to let you believe that. Go ahead and take a look back at the movie again. Looks like I'm never opening that goddamn movie again. Yeah, so there was basically no Carrie in this entire film, even though he was the fucking cover person. Yeah. So, up... I give this a one on the list of Carrie, and so far in Carrie's career, I give his career a one out of this. He has done nothing significant up to this point, um, but be some kind of sleaze ball bullshit. I gave him a two in the last one because his little random bits he had. Yeah, that one was doing that. He was he was actually being funny. He was doing dumb shit, or whatever. He was, he in was this one, he life. was just a hunched over naked man. And we and because you're a hunched over naked man in one scene. Possibly two. We, we we had to sit through this two-hour movie. I am going to give the carry a one as well. Come on! So now we are leaping into 1984 instead of 1983. We place Lane Bindelkoff in Finders Keepers. The movie was adapted from Charles Dickens' 1974 novel, The, the Next to Last Train Ride. So... This appears not to be a sexual movie. Oh my god. And it has an actual budget in the millions. So he has moved up from the sex stuff to Charles Dixon, Dickens novels. <laughs> Dixon free. Because, well, it still doesn't, it's still, he still hasn't leave, left Dick because Dick is still involved. Yes, my name is Dr. Dickenstein. What's your first name, Richard? So the story that I shared in the very beginning about the stranger walking into the house, that actually happened. Mm-hmm. Like, we had a random dude just walk into our house in the middle of this fucking movie. If you guys know what the goddamn movie All in Good Taste is, I know some of you viewers know what it is. Like, Imagine a random stranger seeing this shit on, our, on a, the screen of two, like, full-grown men. And us trying to explain to him why this isn't weird. <laughs> I was too. And we thought it was Joker's roommate. Which was kind of okay if that was his roommate, because then we could explain, hey, we do a YouTube channel, you know, we're just going through Car- Carrie's thing. And the dude looked at this phone for, t- like, five minutes and said, oh, shit, I'm at the wrong house. I'm surprised you didn't kick me out. 
Anyways, this is my check 95. Hopefully this review is a lot shorter than the uh, the S N V F H review. And I'm with my usual cohort. The Great Bargini who only touches notebook until the movie is over. Like a true poet does. I had mine the entire time. I just gave up. Except I actually wrote something on mine, unlike you. Because I gave up. And we are signing out. I'm going to make sure this kitty's okay. And I'm going to punch Bugs in the face. Bugs, come here! Bugs, say goodbye. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.